Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, and welcome to those that are joining on the live stream. Welcome to the DC Blockchain Summit. Wow, uh, it has been an incredible year. Uh, since we last gathered, a lot has happened. Uh, some, some good, some not so great, some exciting, some unexpected, and some just flat out crazy. In the past year, blockchain companies have raised $26.8 billion globally. 57% of that has gone to US companies. Ethereum completed the merge. It's now successfully running on proof of stake. And we had the great deleveraging where a number of centralized crypto companies unwound and crashed. We saw record inflows into DeFi during these events. And then we ended the year with a real bang. Uh, the third largest crypto exchange in the world went bankrupt after billions of dollars of fraud was uncovered. And now we're seeing this historic banking crisis that's unfolding right before our eyes that's further undercutting trust and confidence in our financial system. Yes, a lot has happened in real time. And, and crypto time is super interesting. Sometimes we joke that it feels like we live in our own time dimension because so much can happen in just a compressed amount of time. What else is interesting about time is that it was once controlled by the state. Time, it did not always belong to us. Let's go back in time to La Roma, Italia under papal rule when the minute hand of the clock was introduced in Roman society, it was a significant innovation, but it was also met with much pushback. Time was largely controlled by the state, the powerful papal state. At the top of the hour, a large cannon would be shot, and that would let the people know that an hour had passed, and then all the churches would ring their bells to alert the people of the time. The Pope preached that life was meant to live slowly. The minute hand would ultimately give common people more control of their time. The introduction of the minute hand, therefore, was a threat to the state, disrupting its system forever. For the Pope, this meant having less control of the common people. There was great resistance by the state to add minute hands to the clocks. The minute hand was even illegal at one point in Rome. Last year, I visited St. Peter's Square, and there is still a clock above the Pope's balcony that does not have a minute hand. But the Vatican's efforts did not slow the pace of innovation. The railway system, which moved goods and workers up and down the country, became crucial to businesses and their workforce. And with the growth of railways came the need for more precise timekeeping to sync the train schedules. And it was ultimately the people who were driving the adoption of railways and by necessity the minute hand that led to this technology achieving a network effect that was simply impossible to contain. The state may have been able to stop minute hands from being added to the clocks, but in the words of Galileo, a poor semuave, and yet it moves. <laughs> Looking back in history, it's, it's kind of silly to think that anybody wanted to ban people from putting a minute hand on the clock. There was simply no controlling the adoption of this innovation. It was pretty obvious that the minute hand would help society advance and give people more control over their mess, most precious commodity that's limited in supply. Yes, uh, it feels like we're having the same debates the Romans were having a thousand years ago. Blockchains are similar to minute hands in that they give people more control of their commodities, their data, their intellectual property, and digital assets of all kinds. Did you know that some of the most celebrated technologists of our generation, like Mark Andreessen, Peter Thiel, and Elon Musk, all tried to create the software that does what blockchains enables but couldn't crack the code? Bitcoin solves a decades-old computer science dilemma called the double spend problem that enables people to transfer value through the internet peer-to-peer. -peer. 
Blockchains do not require intermediaries to facilitate transactions. Blockchains enable us, the people, to have more control over our assets. And this will go down in history as one of the most important technological advances, and it is spurring an explosion of innovation today, and it will continue for many years to come. We are only about a decade in, and we are already seeing examples of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology advancing freedom and prosperity all around the world. Throughout today, you are going to hear from some of the world's biggest humanitarian organizations that are leveraging blockchains to streamline incredibly complex bureaucratic networks to get aid directly to people who need it and doing so transparently and reliably. You're going to hear from organizations that are leveraging this technology to level the playing field for women in parts of the world that traditionally shut them out from the workforce. You're going to hear how digital assets have not only expanded economic opportunity for those that face financial barriers, but that also engender opportunities for free expression and greater diversity in the arts. Blockchains provide people from all walks of life with a platform to participate in the digital economy on equal footing. Innovation, it does not care how old you are, what your gender identity is, the color of your skin, or your political philosophy, we are all equal on the blockchain. You're also going to hear from our speakers today about how the state is standing in the way of innovation and holding the US back from implementing policies that will serve the people and technologies well. For example, regulation. It has been over 10 years, and it still remains unclear which regulatory agency plays what role in, in regulating the digital asset marketplace. With no clear guidance, an entire industry worth trillions, with tens and thousands of investors, must make decisions not only based on financial risk, but on legal risk, too. This is why we have fi filed multiple amicus briefs in just the past couple of months. You'll hear more about this from our lawyers later today. You'll also hear about how Bitcoin might be the canary and the coal mine for future energy use in the United States. Recent actions at both the state and the federal level have put proof of work mining in the sights of certain regulators who want to decide who is able to purchase power and how they are allowed to use it in a free society. We are very concerned about this, not just because of the implications it can have for blockchain technology. This is a slippery slope that could set a dangerous precedent for energy use in the United States moving forward. The reality is blockchain technology is leading the transition to clean energy, and it is revitalizing rural communities in the process. We are encouraging policymakers to further study and understand blockchain technology's ability to integrate with energy infrastructure and the role it plays in strengthening energy security. For example, in Texas, they are encouraging Bitcoin mining, which is providing an economic incentive for wind and solar companies to build in their state. Further, due to Bitcoin's flexible load, mining companies are partnered with the state to help stabilize the power grid during peak hours, reducing blackouts. The White House's Office of Science and Technology Policy issued a report on this last year. And today, we're also going to dig in into what is going on with the banks. During this time of critical failures across the banking sector, as regulators look to build renewed confidence in our financial system, digital assets and blockchain should play an integral role in updating our banking infrastructure. Blockchains, for example, can provide certainty and transparency to banking customers seeking real-time access to their funds. Further, the largest asset manager in the world BlackRock, their CEO, recently said, Bitcoin has emerged as a potential safe 
haven for investors trying to protect their savings. Regulators and policymakers should take a step back from this discriminatory tone in recent months aimed at digital assets and their banking partners. Rather, they should seriously consider how new innovations can contribute to solutions that solve an old set of problems that have yet again undercut public trust in our financial system. I am concerned that the US is on the wrong path. Stifling blockchain innovation and development in the US is ceding this technology sector to other parts of the world. Blockchain will be the rails we use to transfer value in the future. And if we are stuck, using antiquated technologies, we are risking losing dominance and leadership in the finance, technology, energy, and other sectors. I am not certain that the US will be the leader in this space, but I am certain that digital assets are here to stay. As we have seen with innovations over the millennia, whether it's the minute hand, the steam engine, electricity, or the internet, jurisdictions that seek to ban technological progress will be left behind. Cryptocurrencies and blockchains are giving people more control of their money, their data, their intellectual property, and their assets. This change, it should not be feared. It should be embraced because it embodies our American values of freedom, independence, privacy, equality, and many others. Not unlike the Romans, we find ourselves in a time where the minute hand was just added to the clock. And we know that technologies that expand freedom and opportunity cannot be contained. They will always find a way to evolve and flourish. The Chamber of Digital Commerce was created to convene diverse sets of stakeholders and advocate for this technology here in Washington and beyond some of the issues that we are up against today may feel insurmountable, but we are a strong and a resilient network, and we will not stop until the potential of blockchain is fully realized. We've got a lot of work to do, and we need all the help that we can get, but with your support, we've already made great strides. Thank you for being a part of this journey for us as we move freedom forward.